and welcome to this another edition of the Ancient Landmark. My name is Jared Jacobs, and I'm so thankful to be with you, so glad we have this opportunity to once again open up God's Word and to study together. We encourage you, if you will, to get a Bible out and follow along with the things we're going to study as we spend time together in the Book of God. Certainly feel free to take any notes that you'd like to take, or if you're having Bible questions at all, you can certainly get a hold of me, and we might talk about these things of a spiritual nature. Now, this particular time uh, in our study, I want to do something just a little different, I guess, and and um, what I want us to talk about is really an event that happened in my life about a decade ago now, and but this event that happened, uh, just really, really changed my life in a lot of ways. It, it, it got my life focused in a lot of ways. And I hope that as a result of what we're going to talk about, we're going to go to the Bible a lot, I promise, but I want to use this event that we're going to talk about as kind of a catalyst for some other things that we need to study. And also, the encouragement for you to make sure that your life is right with God, the encouragement for you to make sure that you do not leave anything to chance, and you do not leave anything uh, for later. You know, we're never promised a later. We're never promised, uh, you know, a future time in that sense. Uh, there's nothing guaranteed in this world, is there? And God has never guaranteed us anything, not any further seconds, minutes, days, hours, years. It's not that way at all. And so there's an urgency that's found throughout the New Testament to be right with God and to get right with God while you can. Even back in the book of Proverbs, in Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 1, where he says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And how true are those words. We don't know what a day may bring forth. And, and that was written by Solomon in Proverbs, but his daddy, David, had even said in Psalm 90, where he asked God to teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. In Ephesians chapter 5, as another example of this, in verse 16, where he talks about uh, there to redeem the time. He says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And the point of redeeming the time means to make the most of our time, make the best of the time that we have. Uh, there's no guarantees of tomorrow, is there? And James would talk about this when James chapter 4, he'd ask the question, verse 13 and 14, he said, what is your life? For it is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. The, our life is just like that vapor, just like smoke, just like steam off the lake or steam off a boiling kettle on the stove. The steam is there for a moment and then passes away into the atmosphere. And that's kind of like our lives. It's just here for a moment and then we're gone. We have no promise of tomorrow. We have no guarantees of tomorrow. We have no anything that's going to, to say that, that somehow we're guaranteed a certain many years, days, months, whatever. And like I said, about a decade ago, there's, there's an event that happened that really emphasized this to me. And it's one that I think about often. And uh, it's the story of a fellow that uh, I'm going to call Mike. Now, Mike, I was first introduced to him, uh, like I said, a little over a decade ago now. And Mike was not a Christian. He was not a child of God, and but he was a good man. And he was one of these good people, good old boy, you might say. And somebody that was a sincere person, nice person. And in fact, uh, I had been to his house before. I didn't realize it at the time, but I had been. And I had gone through inviting uh, folks in that neighborhood to, to worship and to study God's Word. I'd been through that area and, and had been to his house. And I'd come to find out later he wasn't home. But I'd left a piece of paper, I'd left a little card, you know, and, and a little, um, some reading material, some things you could, could hold on to and read. And he said he remembered that and he'd held on to that for a while. But that's getting ahead of my story. Mike, uh, again, was a good man and a good worker and a hard worker. And while I did not know him, there's another friend of mine that did. And he'd worked for a friend of mine. And just the, they was just very impressed with his work ethic. 
impressed with him as a person and so forth, and Mike had cancer. And Mike's cancer was very, very bad. And more than just saying, you know, it's the early stages, whatever, or what, uh, it, it was pretty much over with. A friend of mine called me up, and he said, uh, I want you to go with me, if you will. He said, uh, we need to go talk to Mike. I didn't know Mike but at that point, but I said, yes, I'm going to go. And so me and my friend went, and he said, uh, we went there. Of course, I went, knocked on the door, and went in talked to him for a little bit and just and my friend started out and he said you know he said uh, I want you to know that uh, I've been thinking about you and I've been thinking about your soul at this point Mike had was already having some pretty bad days it was one of these and, and those who have taken care of folks with cancer those who know about folks toward the end of their life with cancer know what I'm talking about he had his good days, bad days, and thankfully this was a good day. And he had agreed to, for us to come talk to him. This was a good day, and it's going to get even better in just a moment. But what impressed me was my friend began to talk, and he said, you know, I've been impressed with you for a good while, and, and you're a good worker and a hard worker, and I know you like to, to, to work with me and, and everything, and, and you've been a good moral person. He said, but, but the thing of it is, you need to get your soul right with God. Have you thought about your soul? And he said, yes, that he did. Well, what have you done about it? Well, and he began to him haul around about things and really not sure, whatever, and he tried to be a good person and all that. And with that, we began to talk, and, and my friend began to open up God's Word and just to study with him. And he wove together chapters books and chapters of scripture with him to impress on him impress upon his mind his need for salvation and what was necessary to be saved and so that's what i want us to think about here just for a moment and i want to i want to go through those same verses that mike heard a decade ago what happened was we began in mark 16 16 in Mark chapter 16, verse 16, the Bible says there, uh, actually in verse 15, Jesus had, had told his apostles, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, my friends, do you understand that verse? Whenever you read this, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Some versions say condemned. Your soul is condemned. Do you understand that verse? Do you understand what Jesus is saying there? Now these are the last words that Jesus was going to speak upon this earth. And he had prepared his apostles for this time period, for this day. He's died on the cross. By the time you get to Mark 16, Jesus has died on the cross. His blood has been shed. He's been in that buried tomb and he has now uh, come forth, resurrected, come forth. And in those days before his ascension back to his father, which you read about in Acts 1, but before his ascension, he walked on the earth for about 40 days, and these are some of his last words, where he tells these folks, Now remember, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, he that believeth not shall be damned. Now those apostles would take that same message, that very same message that Jesus spoke, in Mark chapter 16, verse 16, they would take that message and they would preach that. Jesus would ascend to his Father. This is Acts chapter 1 now. Jesus would ascend to his Father in Acts chapter 1. There to sit upon the right hand of God. And he left the apostles behind to continue his preaching, to continue this message from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the world. Acts 1 verse 8. Now, they take up that mantle. They take up that responsibility. And just about a week and a half later, the day of Pentecost would come, Acts chapter 2. The day of Pentecost would come, and that's when the apostles were given uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. They could speak with other tongues. They could perform all kinds of miracles. 
many miracles they could perform and do and even pass on this ability, pass on this, these gifts to other people, Acts chapter 8. But Acts chapter 2 there, we read how the, that the, the apostle Peter especially preached the truth or preached the gospel to the crowd gathered, to the millions there gathered on the day of Pentecost. And he would tell them in Acts chapter 2 and verse 22, You men of Israel, hear these words. He wants them to pay attention to what's being said. And see, that's something I need to remember. That what was being said here applies to me. Hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, the man approved of God by miracles and wonders and signs which God did in the presence of you all. As ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken him by wicked hands of crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it's not possible that he should be holding of it. See, what Mike needed to know all those years ago was that Jesus Christ came to this world and died upon the cross as a sacrifice for his sins and as a sacrifice for my sins. Mike needed to understand that Jesus Christ died, and in that death, in that burial, and in that resurrection, resulted in salvation that would come to every person. See, Jesus Christ didn't die just for a select predestined few. Jesus Christ didn't die just for, for a small amount, but he tasted death for every man. Hebrews 2 verse 9. He is the one who came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many. Not for a few, for many. Matthew 20, verse 28. It's Jesus that would come and in this, in this way, die upon the cross, be buried and be resurrected. And having done that, the Bible says, we find that, that David even talked about it. And that's what Peter would quote, would be David from Psalm 16, verse 10 that this is exactly what was promised there in the long ago. That Jesus Christ has come, and now being at the right hand of God exalted, that's the ascension, and he goes back to God, being at the right hand of God exalted, and having received from the from Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has shed forth this which you now see and hear. For David has not ascended into the heavens, but he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, and I make thine enemies thy footstool. Acts 2, verse 34 and 35. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made this same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Acts 2, 36 and 37. See, what we find is that Jesus has now uh, been crucified. He is now the Lord and Christ. Lord and Messiah. He needs to be the Lord of your life. Lord, the word Lord means ruler. He means controller. It's like saying king. He needs to reign over you. And about a decade ago, Mike needed to understand that. And you and I need to understand that today. Jesus Christ is to be the Lord. Not just a passing acquaintance. Not just someone I think about when I don't have anyone else to think about. Not just, uh, you know, I'll do the Lord's will because I like to do it anyways. And so as long as I like to do what the Lord says, I'll do it. When I don't like what he says, then I won't do it. That's not being the Lord. Being the Lord means being ruler, controller over us. We do as he has told us to do and we're faithful to do that. When they heard this, they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? G Peter responds by saying, in verse 38, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is unto you and to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words, he says, did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now that's Acts chapter 2, verse 38 to verse 41. See, here Peter was. When they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter now answers. And for the first time in the history of the world, 
He tells these folks what's necessary to be saved. He preaches unto them this gospel truth that has not been taught to mankind until this point. And now for the first time in the history of the world, He would tell these people, repent of your sins, be baptized for the remission of your sins, that you can be saved. You can have your sins forgiven or redeemed. They need to understand that. Peter, the one who was present when Jesus gave his uh, great commission, what man has called the great commission of Matthew 6, I'm sorry, Mark 16, verse 16, having done that in Mark 16, 16, now Peter answers that call. And when people want to know what to do, Peter says, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sin. Now I want to ask you something. Have you repented and have you been baptized for the remission of your sins? You say, well, Jesus said to believe and be baptized. He absolutely did. And if you paid careful attention to Acts 2.36, that's exactly what he said there. Peter said, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. My friends, that word, know assuredly, that phrase, to know assuredly is to believe. And so he's telling these people, you need to believe that Jesus is the Lord in Christ. To know assuredly. When you know assuredly, you believe. That's it. And now based upon that, you need to repent. You need to be baptized for the remission of your sins. Repent of your sins. Be baptized. And that's what you need to do. Those folks need to know what to do. Mike needed to know what to do. And you need to know what to do. Not only do we find this truth here, but we see it in other places. Uh, For example, the Apostle Paul. Before he became an apostle, he was a persecutor of Christians. He persecuted Christians. He consented to their death. He tried to get people killed and did get people killed for no other reason than they believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He had people thrown out of towns and cities, run off, compelled them to blaspheme. They were put in prison and numerous things. One day as he was going to Damascus, so as to obtain more authority to do even more damage and create even more havoc upon the Lord's people. The Bible says on the road to Damascus, he was knocked to the ground by a great shining bright light, brighter than the noonday sun. And they're knocked to the ground. He was told, he said, he asked the question, who are you? And the answer was, I am Jesus whom you're persecuting. And he said, what will you have me to do? Jesus said, go into the city and it'll be told thee what thou must do. And so go into the city, the city of Damascus, in other words. And he was told what to do. And the Bible says that Ananias was the one that told him what to do. And he came to him after Saul had been three days and nights in fasting and prayer. And now comes to him and tells him what to do. He tells him to, now why are you waiting? Arise, be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Acts 22, verse 16. He says, why are you waiting? What's stopping you? Uh, He had scales, as it were, on his eyes, and he was blinded. Saul was, but it was Ananias who who took those things away and with miraculous power took the scales and they fell away from his eyes so that he could see once more. Acts chapter 9 tells us. And in it's Acts 22 verse 16 where he says, Why are you waiting? Arise, be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. What a beautiful thing. What a beautiful statement that was. And what a beautiful truth it was. And a command. Now, will Saul do that or not? Well, the Bible says that he rose immediately and did that very thing. Let me pause for a moment and remind you, this program is brought to you by the Caneyville Church of Christ. The Caneyville Church of Christ meets together on the Lord's Day at 10 a.m. for Bible study. We also have Bible studies Wednesday night at 7, Bible study classes for all ages. We assemble for worship on the Lord's Day at 1045 and 5 in the afternoon. And you'd be our honored guest if you come be with us at any and every time that you can. Our building is located just right across the road from the Sacramento Bank. They're near the intersection of Highway 62 and Highway 79 in Caneyville in Grayson County. We would love to see you. Love for you to come be with us. Love for you to visit at any and every time that you can. Bring an open Bible. Bring an open mind as we study and learn what the book of God has to say. 
And we want to follow that. We want to live it. And I hope that whenever you come be with us, you'll find us to be a friendly group, a, a people that's loving, loving one another just as much as loving you. John 13, verse 34, uh, 33 and 34 talks about that you'd see us to be a loving people and to love one another and to want to do what the Lord says, loving the Lord first in all things. If you're interested in a, a home Bible study, we can set that up. A Bible correspondence course, we can do that as well. Just call me, 589-4167. We can set that up, whether it's a sit-down Bible study or a Bible correspondence course. It's absolutely free. Whatever you'd like to do, we would love to do that. We would love to study with you in whatever form or fashion we can do it. If you'd like to go to our website, you can go to CaneyvilleChurchOfChrist.com. You can go to our Facebook page, look us up on Facebook, and follow us and like us and all of that. And we strive to have, have new material coming up uh, just several times in the week, new things that are happening, new uh, things that are going on to help you in your study and learning of God's Word. So please come visit our website. You can send us messages, emails. You can send us a message on Facebook or in, a private message, whatever you like to do. Uh, we can hear, we'll hear from you. We want to know uh, what's on your mind. We might help you in the study of God's Word. Also, uh, if you're interested, uh, we can also... Uh, like I said, you can call me, you can text me, call me, 589-4167. Let's talk about God's Word. Let's study God's Word and learn what God would have us to do and live according to that true gospel message. Well, we left off looking in Acts chapter 22 and verse 16 where he says, Now why, why are you waiting? Arise, be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Notice again, when we're talking about being baptized, he says baptism washes away sin. Saul had sins to wash away. Saul had sins for which he needed forgiveness. And it was baptism that was going to wash away those sins. That's God's plan. That's God's wish. It's through baptism that we come in contact with the cleansing effects of Christ's blood. For truly, Christ's blood washes away our sins, Revelation 1.5. And that being the case, we come in contact with that when we are baptized into Christ. And there's certainly a need for that. And so why are you waiting? And, and we ask that question of Mike as well. Again, he had a good day. Uh, thankfully, it was on a good day. And it was a day, though, that we realized his days were numbered. And he knew it. We knew it. Everybody knew it. Why are you waiting? Why are you putting this off? And then finally, we looked in 1 Peter 3, verse 21. In 1 Peter verse 30, 21, when the apostle Peter, again, now he's writing a letter to Christians. Before, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, he's preaching this same word. Now he's writing it down. And the same Peter who had been there and heard Jesus' own words out of his mouth, the same Peter who had gone and, and preached it in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, is now writing a letter, and he's talking about and comparing and contrasting with the flood, Noah's flood, from Genesis chapter 6. And now he says, just like that flood, he says the like figure, First Peter 3.21, the like figure, the antitype, the like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not to put away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So by this baptism, he says baptism doth also now save us. Doesn't say baptism doth also not save us. It says baptism doth also now save us. It now saves us. And by, he says, that very act, he says we can have that salvation. And that's been made clear all the way through. And certainly many other verses we could talk about. Colossians chapter 2, for example, and verse 12 and 13 talk about how baptism forgives us our transgressions or forgives us our sins. And, and certainly we can talk about other passages that, that discuss this very act. But as we, we talked with Mike about these things, he got very excited. He said, that is, the, that is what I need to do. And so we talked about it some more. And we talked about this is a commitment you're making. Regardless how long your life may be, this is a commitment you're making to God. This is not just something that you do, kind of like checking this off your bucket list, and then go on to something else. This is not what this is. Whenever you become a Christian, you are making the decision to follow the Lord. You're being born again, John 3, 3-5. You're being like a newborn babe, uh, the Bible talks about in 1 Peter 2.2. 2. 
to be that newborn babe, desiring the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And you need to grow. You need to continue here to grow and to develop and to be what God would have you to be. That's what it's going to take. That's what's necessary. And we need to remember that. And so whenever we're talking about that importance, see, Mike needed to understand that as well. Baptism puts you into Christ, Galatians 3 and verse 27. Baptism also connects you with the church, Acts 2 verse 47, where the Lord adds those people to his church, so save people to his church. You're saved at baptism, and thus the Lord adds you to his church when you're baptized into Christ. He adds the saved people to his church. He adds none of the unsaved to his church. He adds the saved people to his church. When you're baptized, you can be saved. So says uh, Mark 16, 16. So putting all these things together, then we discussed this some more and said, you know, you need to take care of this. He said, I do. And he wanted to go immediately. And that's a Bible concept too as well. Acts chapter 16, for example, verse 30 down through verse 34, talks about how the, the Philippian jailer and his family were baptized straightway. That means immediately. And we took him then. We called some, uh, some others who were interested and would want to know about this. And we went and we baptized him into Christ. Baptized him for the remission of his sins. And friends, he made his life right with God that day. We didn't wait. We didn't put it off. We didn't wait till we got a group together and a big crowd together. We didn't wait till the end of the month or the end of the week or the end of the day. We went right then, just as the Bible teaches. To whenever one wants to do and follow and make that commitment, that covenant promise, the covenant promise to follow the Lord, to, to serve Him, to be His child, to follow Him all the days of your life, to be faithful to the taking of your life, Revelation 2, verse 10, to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. And to make that kind of promise and that kind of commitment to the Lord, we took Him that just immediately. Immediately we went. He was baptized into Christ for the remission of his sins. And like I said, he had a good day that day, and that day got even better. And we prayed together, and we talked together afterward, and we discussed these things. And of course, he was tired after that because the cancer was taking its toll. But Satan no longer had his grip. Cancer may have had something, but Satan had, no, had nothing else. And what impressed me in the days to come was there were other people that came along. There's other people that talked to him. Of course, he had other visitors besides us, obviously. Many people loved him. And sadly, there were those who tried to convince him, well, it was a good thing he got baptized, but you didn't need to do that. That wasn't really important. Well, that man understood. And Mike took those same verses, Mark 16, 16, Acts 2, 38, Acts 22, 16, 1 Peter 3, 21, and told his friends just what he did and why he did it and how it got done. He understood. Mike lived about a month, was all, after we knew one another, and he, he passed on from this life. But he passed on from this life in the hands of God. And that's the beautiful thing. Friends, you don't know how long you have to live. He didn't know how long he had to live. No one knew. But we knew his time was getting near. Your time is getting near. You don't know what's going to happen in a day, and I don't either. Friend, what's stopping you from being a Christian? What's stopping you from making that commitment to serve the Lord, to be what God would have you to be, to follow Him, to live for Him, to be faithful to Him, steadfast, unmovable, making the covenant that you're going to belong to the Lord for now and forever? What's stopping you from being baptized to change that relationship, be baptized for the remission of your sins? What's stopping you? What's put, why are you putting that off? The Bible makes it clear what's necessary to do. And again, here's our friend Mike who was a good example of what to do and take advantage of it right now. Don't delay. Don't put it off. Don't wait. If I can help in any way and I can uh, help you to become a Christian, let's talk about it. 589-4167. Let's study God's Word, learn God's Word, know what God has to say, follow it, and live it all the days of our life. And we'll be a blessed people because of it. I'm so thankful for our time. I'm so thankful for our study together. Until next time, Lord willing, we bid you good day.